Welcome to Living Life. May the Lord strengthen and encourage you through His Word today. What do you think about when you hear the word judge? You probably think of someone who sits in a court with a black robe and a gavel and decides the legal issue. The Hebrew word used for judge is shafat and has more of the meaning of a heroic leader. And that is exactly who the judges in the book of Judges were. No one is really sure who the author of Judges is. Some think that Samuel might be the author. But whoever it is, we know ultimately that God is the author who inspired the human authors through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This book covers a long period from the death of Joshua to the rule of Israel's first human king, Saul. In this time period of over 300 years, the Israelites were living in a terrible time of immorality and idolatry, constantly turning away from God. During this time, God chose and appointed 15 different judges to rule and lead the Israelites. These judges were not elected, but they were chosen and anointed by God to lead the nation of Israel during these times. Sadly, the Israelites continued in this vicious cycle of continuing to worship and follow these false gods, committing idolatry over and over again, and that God would raise these judges to rescue them and to lead them back to God. These judges were men and women who led the nation of Israel during a very difficult time, helping to rescue and deliver the Israelites from their enemies. So let's take a look at today's passage now. Judges chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. After the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? The Lord answered, Judah shall go up. I have given the land into their hands. The men of Judah then said to the Simeonites, their fellow Israelites, Come up with us into the territory allotted to us to fight against the Canaanites. We in turn will go with you into yours. So the Simeonites went with them. When Judah attacked, the Lord gave the Canaanites and Perizzites into their hands, and they struck down 10,000 men at Bezek. It was there that they found Adonai Bezek and fought against him, putting to rout the Canaanites and Perizzites. Adonai Bezek fled, but they chased him and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Then Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off have picked up scraps under my table. Now God has paid me back for what I did to them. They brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. The men of Judah attacked Jerusalem also and took it. They put the city to the sword and set it on fire. After that, Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites living in the hill country, the Negev, and the western foothills. They advanced against the Canaanites living in Hebron, formerly called Kiriath Arba, and defeated Sheshai, Ahiman, and Tamai. Welcome back to Living Life. At the beginning of the book of Judges, we see that Joshua, who was a successor to Moses and had led the Israelites for a while, has died at the age of 110 years old. Joshua had led the nation to the Promised Land, and now they were to drive out the Canaanites and take possession of the land. But now the nation was without a leader. Who would lead them? They turned to God in their time of need and asked for His guidance and leadership. So God guides and instructs them on what to do. The Israelites ask God, who will lead them in the fight against the Canaanites? The Lord appoints Judah to go up against them. Why the tribe of Judah? Judah was the leader of the tribes. Also remember, this is the tribe that the Messiah, Jesus, would come from. So God commands Judah to take the lead, to lead by example, to go in and possess what God has given to them. He has already delivered the land into their hands. It hasn't happened yet, but the Lord speaks with the power and authority that it has already been done. When God puts His plan into action, it is a certainty, a guarantee. So Judah goes up and asks his brother Simeon to help him, and likewise, Judah will help Simeon in his future battles. Help us win now, and we will help you 
in the future. So they go up, and because the Lord is with them, they defeat the Canaanites, and the Perizzites fall into their hands. In verse 5, an evil king is mentioned, Adonai Bezek, and that is the leader of the city of Bezek. This king flees, but he is caught and he is given an unusual punishment. His thumbs and his big toes are cut off. Now, this may seem like a cruel punishment, but this is, this is exactly what he has done himself to 70 other kings that he has conquered. In verse 7, he says, God has paid me back for what I did to them. This evil king has received justice, divine punishment for his evil deeds. Our God is a God of justice indeed. There was also a practical reason for this punishment. It made one useless as a soldier. Without your thumbs, you cannot properly grip a spear or a sword. And without your big toes, you cannot walk properly. So after defeating the Canaanites at Bezek, they continue to Jerusalem and also capture it as well. And as they move on to the other cities, God continues to give them victory after victory. Just as the Israelites looked to God for his guidance, it is a reminder for all of us to turn to God and seek His counsel and guidance in our lives, especially in times of difficulty, uncertainty, or crisis. Only God can show us the best path to follow. When we follow and obey God, we know He is leading us on the best path, the one that leads to life. Is there a big decision in your life that is causing you some uncertainty? Are you unclear on what direction to take for your future? I want to encourage you to turn to God and seek His counsel. Only God can show you the best decision to make and the right path to take. As it says in Psalm 119 verse 105, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. May we all spend time meditating on God's word every day for His guidance, for it is a light unto our path. We also see through today's passage how God leads the Israelites to victory after victory. It is not because the Israelites are seasoned warriors with great military might. Remember, the Israelites are former slaves from Egypt. Yet they continue to achieve victory after victory over nations with more soldiers and greater military might than them. How was this possible? It was because the Lord was fighting for them. He was the one leading them to victory. On their own, it was impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Remember, God fights our battles. When God is for us, who can stand against us? No matter what obstacle or battle you are facing in your life today, have faith and courage. Be bold, knowing that God is with you that He will never leave you nor forsake you, that He will finish the good work that He began in you, and that nothing can stand against the Word of God, for His promises never fail. Through today's passage, we see that by seeking after the Lord and following His instructions, the Israelites were able to achieve victory over their enemies. When God is for us, we are able to achieve victory over any battle, any struggle or problem we face in this world. We just need to humble ourselves before Him, ask for His counsel and guidance, and follow His lead. Who do you turn to when you face troubles and difficulties in your life? I want to encourage you to turn to the Lord and seek after Him. No matter how difficult or impossible it may seem, remember that nothing is impossible for our God. God leads us on a path that He has prepared in advance for us. All we need to do is follow Him. Is there a battle that you are struggling to overcome in your life today? Ask God to strengthen you and help you to overcome it through Christ, who gives us the victory through His victory on the cross. We can overcome all things through Christ, who has already overcome the world. We already have victory, for Christ has defeated the enemy, and death has lost its sting. So my brothers and sisters, may you live victoriously through Christ each and every day as you humble yourself before God and follow His guidance in your life. And may you be encouraged by the assurance that God is always with you now and 
forever. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that through you, we can have victory and success and overcome any obstacle, any problems in our lives because you have already defeated the enemy through your victory on the cross. May we live each day victoriously through you, knowing that when you are for us, nothing can stand against us. Give us the courage and boldness to face anything that comes our way, knowing that you are always before us and standing behind us as well. We pray that no matter how difficult or how impossible any circumstance may seem, may we continue to look to you for guidance and for your leadership, knowing that you are the one who leads us on the path that leads to life. We pray in any struggle, we come to you and thank you that you help us to overcome it through Christ. We thank you and we love you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.